your colleagues and friends. Uh, I hope you enjoyed a good lunch. I haven't had time to do it, promoting our uh, event in the national media. Uh, so, as we have agreed uh, before uh, the lunch break, uh, I would kindly ask uh, Lord uh, Witty to react to your interventions, especially those concerning Brexit. Lord Witty, please. I, there are a few questions I feel I need to answer. Um, the first is, I was asked, and this tends to be the standard response from the European spokesperson, what does, the Britons really, Brit, what does Britain really want? Now, I've not managed over the lunch break to talk to Boris Johnson, but I'm pretty sure the focus would be to ensure that the Irish backstop is not in perpetuity and that there are ways of mutually agreeing to get out of it. It will probably, if it's Boris, it will be probably put in the terms of a time limit, and I know that would cause difficulties. But if you're asking me what you're likely to be asked for, it relates to the, the, uh, the border and it will relate to being not trapped into the terms of the withdrawal agreement uh, in perpetuity. I think that is eminently possible to do uh, in the ingenuity which has uh, featured in earlier European discussions. Uh, but it will be politically difficult in Ireland, in Britain, uh, and here. Um, I was also asked about the timescale. To do that, and to do it in a context where we're giving a slightly clearer impression both to European member states and to Britain of what the long-term trade arrangement is going to do, then October, September and October are probably the worst months uh, to try and reach a final agreement. There will be a new British government, there will be an old commission on its way out and a new commission coming in, uh, and if, it's, uh, if the new Prime Minister has difficulty in forming a government, there are also our party political conferences at the end of September. It is actually difficult to see how we can do this and get endorsed for doing it uh, by October. I appreciate that the up, the up the hill and down again for British industry, Irish industry, European industry, transport system has been appalling, but actually a couple more months or maybe even slightly longer will be necessary. Uh, and I would ask the indulgence of colleagues uh, to recognise that when we have a new government in Britain. As far as the general trade issues are concerned, I'll just say one thing. Uh, people emphasised the need for values to be accompanied by trade, otherwise you will have a reaction both within Europe and beyond anti-globalisation, anti-free trade and populism. Uh, and, and it is Europe that has led the way in having value-led free trade. Uh, and I hope that in all your approaches to free trade, whether you're with the United Kingdom or all the other nations of the world, that, that value-based free trade continues to be a central European objective. Thank you. Uh, we thank you very much. If uh, there are reactions, please informally after, because Lord Witte would stay with us uh, these days. Uh, and now, I'd like to move to the next session, a quite challenging as well, uh, called the European education area is a driving factor for reshaping and strengthening the single market. We have an economy without borders called single market. We have a new reality called digital cyber reality without having a kind of suzerainty uh, on, it, on it, uh, we have economy, an economy based on internet, so without political borders. Uh, we've, uh, we have corporation acting cross-border, but we have education still with borders, <laughs> with national responsibility. Uh, the title of our session sounds a bit instrumental, how to provide markets with adapted labor force. It is not the case. 
the challenges of the current industrial revolution and artificial intelligence uh, challenges are much important and deeper than we imagine and we are aware about this. Uh, for discussing if a common uh, area of education is needed and how to build it. Uh, we have invited, for instance, two keynote speakers. One of them is representing European Commission, uh, Ms. Vanessa Debier-Senton, uh, and the other uh, Romanian National Academy. Uh, I would start with the representative of European Commission uh, asking uh, Ms. Senton to summarize uh, the key points of the Commission on this respect. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. So imagine a European Union where everyone, young and less young people, can move freely to study and receive the best education and training anywhere across the continent and have it automatically recognized in any member state for the purpose of further learning. Imagine a Europe where everyone can contribute to economic growth by co-creating knowledge and innovation with peers from different disciplines, cultures, and countries. This is our aim with the creation of a European education area by 2025. We all know that technical, technological change and economic globalization are having a profound impact on our future. We all know that in the next decades, half of the jobs will disappear and others will be created. We have to be ready to adapt and make the most of these opportunities. To face this transition, what employers and society need and will need even more are relevant skills, such as adaptation to change, resilience, foreign language competencies, ability to work in multicultural and multidisciplinary teams, computer skills, and critical thinking. And they also need more of these talents and of these graduates from post-secondary and higher education. A recent study predicts that by 2060, 59% of people in the EU will have post-secondary education as compared to 35% in 2015. So the labor force will be smaller, but better educated. So we need both more relevance and more inclusiveness in our education systems. These are two faces of the same coin. Europe has made a lot of progress, yet more needs to be done to make sure that our young talents can get the right skills, including digital and entrepreneurial skills, and provide opportunities for a more diversity of learners to get an affordable and high quality education. Artificial intelligence and digital technology can contribute towards more innovative and more inclusive pedagogies, but it also creates a skills gap that education systems should address. We need more data scientists, more engineers, but also more philosophers who understand artificial intelligence. And at the same time, we also need to ensure that all citizens can benefit from the technological ad advances. This means upskilling and reskilling, allowing everyone to reap the benefits of the digital shift. And we need not only more master degrees in artificial intelligence that are more and more flourishing across the EU, but also computer literacy from an early age. We need to promote computer sciences from lower educational levels, including in secondary education. For this, teachers and educators are crucial. 
we need to invest more in their training, as well as in IT infrastructure in schools, education and training organizations. So what is the role of the European Union? Of course, member states have the full responsibility for the content of teaching and for the organization of their education system. Still, according to Article 165 of the Treaty, the European Union has a key role to play in the development of quality education by fostering better cooperation between member states and their training organizations, fostering the mobility of learners, students and teachers, as well as academic recognition of diplomas and periods of study abroad. And this is this cooperation that the EU should reinforce and bring it to the next level of ambition. This is precisely what President Juncker reminded the head of state and governments in Sibiu. It is time to be bold and to invest in the people because the people are the future of Europe. This is also part of the Council strategy, a strategic agenda for 2019-2024, where it is mentioned we must step up investment in people's skills and education. Since 2017, with the Rome Declaration in March and the European Pillar for Social Rights in November, education has never been so high on the political agenda. And this is in this context, ahead of the leaders' discussion on education at the Gothenburg Social Summit, that the Commission presented her vision for a European education area by 2025. In a follow-up, the Council conclusions of mid-December called on Member States, Council and Commission to take work forward on the three main objectives. What are these three main objectives? The first one, boost cross-border learning mobility and cooperation. Second one, overcome remaining barriers to the free movement of learners and a real European learning space. The third one, improve the inclusive, lifelong learning-based and innovation-driven nature of our education training systems. And in pursuing these three objectives, the European education area covers learners from all age groups, from early childhood education and care, schools, up to vocational education training, higher education and adult learning. So why boosting learning mobility? When looking again at the skills that are most needed by the future employers in society, it is remarkable that they correspond to a very large degree with the competencies that we are very actively and successfully stimulating through Erasmus Plus Learning and Mobility. A study released last month underscores that nine in 10 Erasmus students report being more adaptable, able to cooperate with people from different cultures and disciplines, have improved their problem solving skills, and more than half also improved their digital skills. As a result, 80% of them find a job within three months after graduation, and almost one in two Erasmus trainees offer the job in their host enterprise abroad. One in 10 create their own company. But today, less than 4% of EU learners take part in an Erasmus Plus experience. We can, and we must do better. This is why the Commission has proposed to at least double the budget for the future Erasmus programme for the period 2021-2027, and the European Parliament has proposed to triple it. This will allow us to offer many more opportunities to young people to experience the beneficial expects by tripling the number of participants for that same period, not only in higher education, but also for school pupils, vocational education training learners, apprentices, and it will help to reach out to people from all social backgrounds through new mobility formats on top of what already exists. We will also focus even more on forward-looking forward competencies there will be more traineeships opportunities in key fields such as digital and artificial intelligence, but this could also be extended to other fields such as renewable energy, climate change, environmental engineering, health, etc. To achieve this objective, we need in parallel 
to overcome the remaining barriers to the free movement of learners. This is why the Commission proposed and the, the Council unanimously adopted a recommendation on the automatic recognition of higher and upper secondary education qualifications and learning periods abroad. But important work remains to give effect to this recommendation. And we need you to take it into effect. Lack of the necessary proficiency in foreign language skills is also another barrier to the free movement of learners. And we're very glad that the Council adopted another recommendation to allow that every learner at the end of compulsory school is able to speak not only the, their language of instruction, but also on top of that two additional languages. A European Student Card Initiative will also make it easier for students to go on mobility, not to replace the national student cards, nor the national or local IT systems, but to connect them to allow for a secure exchange of student academic data. Now, the third objective, to improve the inclusive, lifelong learning-based and innovation-driven nature of the education training systems. The Commission launched several initiatives that all require your support and an incentive follow-up. First, the Council recommendation on a new quality framework for early childhood education and care, ensuring that it can be the foundation of a successful lifelong learning path. Then, the Council recommendation key competencies for lifelong learning gives particular attention to educate all young people and the sustainable development goals, motivating more young people to engage in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, improving digital competencies, reinforcing civic competencies and nurturing entrepreneurial attitudes. A significant amount of work is needed to help transpose the recommendation to national curricula. In parallel, a digital education action plan proposing 11 actions to help member states and their citizens to better adapt to life and the work in an age of rapid digital change has been proposed. Et maintenant, je vais m'exprimer en français afin de promouvoir le multilinguisme et aussi honorer une initiative initiée par la France qui, est, qui sont les universités européennes. Car il est nécessaire aussi de transformer nos, nos universités et nos établissements d'enseignement supérieur. Alors, de quoi s'agit-il Ces universités européennes sont des alliances d'établissements d'enseignement supérieur existants venant du nord, du sud, de l'est, de l'ouest de l'Europe, pour proposer une stratégie commune à long terme, à 10 ou à 15 ans, de comment ils voient leur université, le futur de leur université, de façon à promouvoir cette identité européenne commune et ses valeurs communes, de façon aussi à booster la mobilité des étudiants et du personnel académique, et enfin de booster leur compétitivité sur l'échelle mondiale. L'objectif pour ces universités et ces établissements d'enseignement supérieur est de structurer leur activité d'enseignement, de formation, et là où cela fait du sens, de leur activité de recherche également, autour de challenges transdisciplinaires qu'elles vont choisir elles-mêmes. Cela peut être le changement climatique, le développement durable, mais aussi les sciences humaines, les sciences sociales. Ce sont leurs choix. Elles vont créer des campus interuniversitaires où les étudiants, les doctorants, le personnel académique, les chercheurs vont pouvoir être mobiles à tous les niveaux. Ils vont mettre ensemble leurs ressources humaines, euh, infrastructures, leurs ressources de données ensemble de façon à pouvoir délivrer des programmes, des cours ou des modules communs, de façon à ce que chaque étudiant puisse choisir ce qu'il a envie d'apprendre, où il veut, quand il veut, et obtenir un diplôme européen qui sera reconnu parmi tous les États membres. Ces étudiants que l'on souhaite provenir d'origines de, 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 très diverses et où ils pourront combiner un programme avec ce qu'on appelle les microcrédits. 
ces microcrédits qui vont prendre de plus en plus d'importance aussi pour reformer les personnes qui sont déjà sur le marché de l'emploi, mais qui veulent mettre à jour leurs connaissances. Et les universités vont, un, vont avoir un rôle de plus en plus clé dans ce domaine également. Alors, ce concept d'université européenne a, que nous avons co-développé ensemble avec les universités, les étudiants et les ministères des États membres a créé beaucoup d'enthousiasme. Nous avons reçu plus de 54 candidatures impliquant plus de 300 établissements d'enseignement supérieur à travers tous les États membres. Nous allons présenter la première sélection cette semaine, dans quelques jours. Mais nous voulons construire sur cet enthousiasme. Il n'y a pas de perdants, il n'y a que des gagnants et des futurs gagnants. Et nous allons continuer avec un prochain appel à candidature cet automne pour continuer à supporter les établissements d'enseignement supérieur à mettre en œuvre cette vision. Mais pour faire de cet espace européen de l'éducation une réalité d'ici 2025, pour renforcer le marché unique, nous avons besoin de rendre cette vision une réalité. Et pour ça, je suis très contente de participer à ce débat que nous aurons ensemble cet après-midi. Merci à tous. Thank you very much. <laughs> After the head of the unit in charge with higher education policies and programs in the European Commission's Directorate General for Education, Youth, Sports and Culture, it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Ioan Dumitrake, Secretary General of the Romanian Academy, to present the academic vision about ensuring the quality of European education <coughs> and uh, for introducing a few words about Romanian's position in the European higher education area. Please. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a real pleasure for me to say a few words about education on behalf of the Romanian Academy. I want to say a few words about Im the impact of the the impact of the information technology and communication about the evolution of education. Educația, cercetarea științifică și inovarea au fost și vor fi factorii determinanți ai progresului, ai bunăstării și evoluției omenirii. Azi, mai mult ca oricând, prin trecerea de la economia bazată esențialmente pe resurse energetice și materiale, la economia bazată pe cunoaștere, creativitate și inovare, se impune o schimbare de paradigmă în procesul educativ-formativ. Trăim într-o lume în care singura constantă este schimbarea, al cărui ritm este mai accelerat ca oricând. Vorbim de o lume globalizată, multidisciplinară, puternic conectată și extrem de complexă și heterogenă. Va trebui să construim o planetă mai inteligentă, pentru cetățeni capabili să locuiască și să valorifice avantajele acesteia în interes personal și pentru societate. Interacțiunea naturală între educație, tehnologie, economie și societate evidențiază rolul esențial al educației pentru evoluția societății. Educația, cercetarea științifică și inovarea reprezintă pilonii societății bazate pe cunoaștere, creativitate și inovare. Formarea resurselor umane pentru noua societate cognitivă, în contextul evoluției tehnologiei, informației și comunicațiilor, presupune o nouă viziune asupra întregului sistem de educație. Asigurarea unei dezvoltări durabile globale în contextul unor provocări majore, ca resurse energetice limitate, încălzirea globală, îmbătrânirea populației, disparități socioeconomice majore, migrația și, nu în ultimul rând, nivelul scăzut al educației populației în țările subdezvoltate, presupune o abordare holistică a tuturor problemelor asociate noii societăți digitalizate. Ne îndreptăm cu pași mai mari sau mai mici spre o nouă economie bazată pe cunoaștere, spre o societate a conectivității, printr-o tehnologie cu evoluție spectaculoasă, cu impact major asupra comportamentului uman, asupra calității vieții acestuia. Noua revoluție industrială, cu voia sau fără voia noastră, pătrunde rapid în noua economie digitalizată, cu efecte benefice pentru evoluția noastră. Întrebarea firească este, suntem pregătiți pentru a face față 
provocărilor generate de evoluția tehnologiei informației și comunicațiilor? Putem valorifica beneficiile oferite de tehnologie informației care se regăsesc practic în toate dispozitivele, mijloacele, produsele și procesele cu care interacționăm? Sunt întrebări la care trebuie să dăm răspuns. Digitalizarea schimbă comportamentul de consum și transformă industrii, dar cererea și oferta ca mecanism de reglare a valorii va continua să existe. Competitivitatea va reprezenta atributul esențial în societatea globalizată, supusă unor constrângeri legate de resurse umane și resurse materiale. În acest context, rolul educației este esențial, iar mobilitatea resurselor umane calificate reprezintă o cerință a dezvoltării durabile globale. Se impune ajustarea educației la cerințele secolului conectivității, crearea unui sistem de educație care să răspundă cerințelor noii revoluții industriale. Tehnologia va perturba în mod fundamental natura muncii. Noi profesii și meserii vor fi necesare în economia digitalizată. Peste 45% din profesiile actuale vor dispărea în următorii 25 de ani, fiind locuite de noi specializări, noi meserii impuse de noile tehnologii. Nivelul automatizării proceselor va crește generând disponibilizări majore, practic în toate sectoarele socioeconomice. Decalajul major între competențe și cerințele economiei digitale generează creșterea șomajului în rândul tinerilor, la nivelul țărilor, impunându-se regândirea întregului sistem de educație, adaptarea acestuia la cerințe, fără a renunța la pregătirea de bază pentru asigurarea unei evoluții profesionale cât mai rapide și sigure. Inteligența artificială și robotica cognitivă vor crea mai multe locuri de muncă decât vor elimina, însă apare ca o necesitate remodelarea abilităților forței de muncă extinderea programelor de reconversie profesională, crearea unor centre specializate pentru formarea și adaptarea forței de muncă la noile tehnologii, învățarea continuă, telemunca și telerobotica, automatizarea muncii, învățarea automatizată sunt direcții de acțiune cu un important impact asupra evoluției spre o societate bazată pe creativitate și inovare. Area europeană a educației, bazată pe criterii valorice, și principii de respect și egalitate de șanse pentru toți tinerii va contribui la reducerea deficitului de experți, va trebui să asigure capacitatea de adaptare a profesiilor la cerințele societății viitorului, bazate pe cunoaștere, creativitate și inovare. Corelat cu schimbarea de paradigmă în educație, apare ca o necesitate regândirea sistemului de cercetare la nivelul întregii Uniunii Europene, care să conducă la reducerea decalajelor între state, la diminuarea fenomenului brain drain. O Europa puternică, competitivă, la nivel global, se poate realiza dacă toate statele sunt competitive, performante în domeniul educației, cercetării științifice și inovării. Cei trei piloni ai societății bazate pe cunoaștere trebuie întăriți la nivelul tuturor statelor membre printr-o colaborare mai eficientă, bazată pe respect, egalitate și recunoaștere reciprocă. Analiza periodică a impactului mobilităților tinerilor la nivelul tuturor statelor membre și la nivelul întregii Uniuni ar putea reduce disparitățile ce apar ca urmare a exodului tinerilor talentați. O atenție deosebită va trebui acordată pregătirii populației pentru compatibilizarea cu cerințele noi societății informaționale și în perspectivă cu cerințe societății bazate pe cunoaștere. Se estimează că peste 40% dintre cetățenii europeni nu au suficiente abilități digitale, și aproape 20% nu au abilități digitale deloc. Se impune lansarea unor programe speciale pentru alfabetizare digitală, susținerea acestora din resurse locale și resurse globale pentru a evita, în contextul mobilității forței de muncă, apariția disparităților sociale majore, cu efecte greu de anticipat. Apreciem o atenție deosebită va trebui acordată formării noi generații de dascăli, care ar trebui să aibă abilități digitale, care să le permită să utilizeze eficient tehnica de calcul în procesul educativ-formativ, dar și să elaboreze programe adaptate nivelului elevilor, studenților, atât din punct de vedere profesional, cât și didactic. 
Programele de mobilități pentru dascări și studenți au contribuit la creșterea calității educației și asigurarea de competențe digitale la toate nivelurile. Societate digitală, economie digitală, industrie și educație. Area Europeană a Educației va trebui să se includă mobilitatea de învățare, recunoașterea calificărilor, modernizarea curriculară, crearea universităților de elit la nivel european, îmbunătățirea procesului de educație și formarea continuă, învățarea a două limbi străine, promovarea educației digitale, îndreptându-se spre o nouă paradigmă cunoscută sub denumirea Smart Education. Întregul sistem de educație și de formare a resurselor umane va trebui regândit în concordanță cu cerințele societale și economice, ca sistem flexibil, eficient, transparent, predictiv, cu reale posibilități de adaptare continuă. Societatea bazată pe cunoaștere îi impune un înalt nivel de cultură și educație a tuturor cetățenilor, un sistem de cercetare științifică avansată, ancorat în problematica societății și economiei. Crearea unei planete mai inteligente îi impune participarea și colaborarea tuturor cetățenilor. Digitalizarea educației și trecerea la așa numită educație inteligentă poate reprezenta un suport major pentru societatea viitorului. Implementarea noilor concepte în educație, având ca suport tehnologiile digitale, impune o nouă viziune asupra întregului sistem educațional, vizând atât pregătirea și formarea graduală de competențe și abilități, cât și modalitățile tehnologice de accesare și valorificare a cunoștințelor. Implementarea cu succes a tehnologiilor de inteligență artificială, de învățare automatic, automată, a roboticii în toate sectoarele de activitate reprezintă un factor determinant pentru creșterea bunăstării și calității vieții cetățenilor. Fără educație performantă, cercetare științifică avansată și inovare, șansele realizării noi societăți cognitive sunt limitate. Valorificarea potențialului tehnologiei informației, comunicațiilor, automatizărilor avansate în toate sectoarele socioeconomice, inclusiv în procesul de educație și formare a resurselor umane, reprezintă nu numai o dorință, ci o cerință a societății moderne. Educația este marcată de evoluția tehnologiei, iar tehnologia este influențată major de educație. Evoluția societății este marcată de educație și tehnologie. Vă mulțumesc pentru atenție! We thank you very much. Uh, noticing your optimism about science, technology, and the role of education came in my mind uh, something. In the very next day after the European elections, our uh, Czech friends organized a huge conference uh, dedicated to the future of the European Union. One of the sessions of this conference was uh, this one, uh, asking what would happen when the computers will be more intelligent than we are? So, at the beginning, uh, the answer is very easy. By now, programming computers was a human activity. After, programming human beings will be a job, job for, for computers. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the future has already happened, and we have to pay attention. Uh, I, I do believe that uh, our main uh, goal is to empower citizens in order to save democracy, not only in uh, providing uh, labor force for markets, which is important as well. Uh, by now, uh, we have 18 colleagues uh, willing to speak. Um, two minutes and a half, we could manage uh, to use between two minutes and two minutes and a half. And I would start by uh, kindly asking to take the floor, my colleague Romanian, Dan Barna. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Renew Europe is, as you all know, the, the new relevant player at the European level 
that uh, our vision is, of course, uh, a Europe of open markets and free trade. But transforming this vision in, uh, in education issues, it's quite, uh, it's quite obvious that we all in Europe should accept that Europe is not longer in the position to fight competitive with China on producing T-shirts, pen, or uh, chairs. And from that perspective, the digital world became for, uh, for Europe the critical world because it's the only exit for us. The, the future will be digital, and the, the only chance for Europe to remain and be competitive in the, in the global market is to significantly and broader invest in education, but not only in the theoretical education, which is fairly well, but also in that side of professional education adapted and very well adapted to the digital technology and digital world. Because otherwise, no matter how many carpenters or uh, other kind of good and necessary professions will be developed in Europe, we will lose the global fight on, uh, on surviving economically. So uh, our vision and our, our approach, uh, I'm talking about Renew Europe and also uh, my party, USR, here in Romania, is that it's critical for Europe to direct a significant part of uh, resources for, for invest in education on this digital side of the future because there is no other future. It's so simple, so clear. It's, it's our critical world became a digital Europe. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and the next speaker, I invite you to take the floor, is uh, Domagos Hajdukovic from Croatia. Hvala lijepo, gospođo predsjednice. Naime, iako je obrazovanje u kompetenciji zemalja članica, moj je stav da u obrazovanju e, treba puno više koordinacije i suradnje. Po meni dva su segmenta ovdje ključna, a to je cijeloživotno učenje i obrazovanje učitelja i nastavnika. Uzimajući u obzir kako se tržište, posebno tržište rada, mijenja puno brže nego prije, gotovo u realnom vremenu, kao i stareću populaciju Europe, cijeloživotno učenje postaje više nego ikad potrebno. Cijeloživotno učenje mora biti dostupno, radna snaga se mora moći prilagođavati tržištu, neformalno učenje i stjecanje vještina se mora moći službeno evidentirati i valorizirati, a sve u službi najefikasnijeg prilagođavanja brzo mijenjajućem tržištu, prije svega radne snage, što onda za sobom povlači naravno i mobilnost i sve ostalo o čemu e, su uvodničari govorili. Druga bitna, drugi bitni segment je obrazovanje učitelja i nastavnika. Naime, stari grčki filozof je upitan koje je najvažnije zanimanje u Ateni rekao sljedeće. Ako Atena ne bude imala dobre krojače, Atenja neće biti goli. Ako Atena ne bude imala dobre postolare, Atenja neće biti bosi. Ali ako Atena ne bude imala dobre učitelje, neće biti Atene. Mislim da to možemo pretočiti u našu europsku priču, jer ako ne budemo budi, imali dobre učitelje, neće biti ni Europe kakvu mi želimo. Nacionalne kurikulume moraju posebnu pažnju posvetiti obrazovanju onih koji obrazuju. Govoreći iz osobnog iskustva, kao i sam učitelj u prošlom životu prije politike, sustav poučavanja počiva na obrazovanim, motiviranim i predanim pojedincima. I to je činjenica koju ne smijemo zanemariti. Ukoliko želimo postići ove ambiciozne ciljeve koje se postavljamo, a to je veća mobilnost, to je veća koordinacija, to je e, veća homogenost kada govorimo o obrazovanju i pripremanje za europsko tržište, tada moramo upravo obrazovanje učitelja i nastavnika imati na umu. Jer kada oni budu spremni iznijeti ovaj cilj, tada će taj cilj biti i postignut. Hvala vam lijepo. Thank you very much. We have to change, we have to change the rules because uh, many other colleagues registers, registered for speaking. So, 90 seconds, please. 90 seconds for the watch. The next uh, speaker uh, is Mr. Paulo Sá from Portugal. Obrigado, Sr. President. As instituições da União Europeia proclamam frequentemente 
que a educação e a cultura são pilares essenciais à construção de sociedades inclusivas e coesas, além de constituírem fatores de grande importância para o crescimento económico, a criação de emprego e a justiça social. Mas estas bonitas proclamações esbarram no dia-a-dia -dia com as imposições orçamentais da União Europeia. O cumprimento dessas imposições limita a capacidade de os Estados-membros darem respostas adequadas às necessidades na área da educação e da cultura, assim como noutras áreas sociais, como na saúde, na proteção social e na habitação. Veja-se o caso de Portugal, onde as funções sociais do Estado têm sido postas em causa pelas exigências da União Europeia de redução acelerada do déficit orçamental e da dívida pública. Em resultado dessas exigências, o investimento público é, em Portugal, o mais baixo nos últimos 45 anos. O baixo nível de investimento tem dramáticas consequências no funcionamento do sistema público de educação, levando à sua degradação. Na cultura, o panorama não é melhor com o encerramento de serviços e estruturas culturais e com a redução da oferta. E estes problemas não se resolvem com bonitas proclamações, como aquelas que costumamos ouvir das instituições da União Europeia, resolvem-se estabelecendo com prioridade a efetivação dos direitos sociais dos cidadãos, o que implica, implicaria pelo menos no caso de Portugal, romper com as imposições e restrições orçamentais impostas pela União Europeia. Obrigado. Muito obrigada. Uh, and now our colleague from Bulgaria, Ivelina Vasilieva. Благодаря госпожа председател. Образованието е един от основните фактори движещи економическото развитие. В основата на новата индустриална революция стоят именно образованието и високите научни постижения. Ние в България споделяме разбирането, че инвестициите в образованието са инвестиция в бъдещето. Затова и образованието е определено като безспорен приоритет в управленската програма на българското правителство. Ключов аспект от политиката в областта е намирането на баланса между модернизация и развитие на образователната система и в същото време запазването на традиционните ценности. Визията на Европейския съюз за европейско образователно пространство е много навременна. За да материализираме правилно тази идея, трябва да подходим с ясното съзнание, че тя трябва да се основава на сътрудничеството между държавите членки и на широкия диалог с всички заинтересовани страни, на взаимното признаване на научни резултати, дипломи и квалификации, на синергията между отделните европейски политики, инициативи и инструменти в сектора на образованието и обучението. Основен инструмент за съществуването на европейското образователно пространство е програмата Erasm+, включително новото поколение на тази програма за следващия програмен период. Във връзка с автоматичното признаване на дипломи за средно и висше образование, подкрепяме насърчаването на автоматично взаимно признаване на дипломите за висше образование и за завършен гимназиален етап на средното образование. Основните теми, които трябва да бъдат обхванати в рамките на европейското образователно пространство, са насърчаването на дигиталната компетентност и повишаването на квалификацията и подкрепата на преподавателите. Дякуи за слово. Já bych se stručně vyjádřil i k materiálu a k otázkám, které rumunské předsednictví předložilo. Já jsem moc rád, že rumunské předsednictví dává takový důraz právě na tuto oblast, protože konkurenceschopnost jde ruku v ruce se vzděláváním. A proto si myslím, že je velmi relevantní, abychom dnes a nejednou dnes o tom mluvili. Nicméně větší kompetence nebo přenos kompetencí na společné orgány považuji, na společné orgány Evropské unie považuji za velmi problematické. Vzdělávání by skutečně primárně mělo zůstat v rukou členských států a myslím si, že i určitá diverzita, které jednotlivé vzdělávací systémy přináší, může být bráno jako, bráno jako konkurenční výhoda. To neznamená, že si nemáme navzájem mezi sebou inspirovat, a používat příklady dobré praxe. A myslím si, že v tomto ohledu je právě nezastupitelná úloha Evropské komise a dalších společných orgánů Evropské unie, které by měly zejména podporovat spolupráci v dělávacích institucí, měly by plnit koordinační činnost, měly by nabízet, tak jak se tomu děje i dnes, programy, finanční programy na podporu vzdělávání, měly by hrát rozhodující roli 
v oblasti uznávání vzdělávání. Měli by podporovat mobilitu a internacionalizaci. Pokud jde o jeden malý segment, který byl tady zmíněn v našem vzdělávání, tak je to určitě jazykové vzdělávání, které si myslím, že v celé řadě členských zemí, včetně mé země, má velké nedostatky a správně tady zaznělo, že pokud nebudeme schopni efektivně mezi sebou komunikovat a nebudeme schopni komunikovat s okolním světem, tak samozřejmě to podvazuje naší konkurenceschopnost jako ekonomického giganta ve světové ekonomice. Takže tady bych zdůraznil tento aspekt. Thank you, thank you very much. And now, representing uh, German Bundesrat, our colleague Rainer Robra. Ja, vielen Dank, Frau Präsidentin. In der COSAC sollte man bei aller Faszination dieses großen Themas auch über Subsidiarität sprechen. Erziehung, Bildung und Kultur gehören zu den wichtigsten Aufgaben der Mitgliedstaaten. In Deutschland sind dies die Länder, die ja im Bundesrat versammelt sind. Das dient der Wahrung der nationalen und regionalen Identität. Es ist richtig, die europäische Wirtschaft durch ein leistungsfähiges Bildungswesen stärken zu wollen, auch um den Fachkräftemangel, gerade auch im Handel, entgegenzuwirken. Dafür sind mehr Kooperationen sinnvoll. Aber die Inhalte von Erziehung, Bildung und Kultur folgen nicht allein dieser ökonomischen Zweckrationalität, sondern sie dienen der Entwicklung allseits gebildeter Persönlichkeiten. Sie stehen nicht zur Disposition der europäischen Ebene. Hier gilt das Subsidiaritätsprinzip in seiner reinsten Form, ebenso wie bei der Organisation des Bildungswesens. Äußere Rahmenbedingungen wie die technische Dimension der Digitalisierung oder andere Infrastrukturen des Bildungswesens darf die EU unterstützen und fördern, zum Beispiel auch zur Verbesserung der energetischen Effizienz unserer Schulen. Und Mobilität ist zweifellos wichtig, deshalb ist Erasmus weiterentwickelt worden und Europäische Universitäten können in der Tat attraktiv sein, aber Bildungsinhalte und Bildungsabschlüsse bleiben nationale Aufgaben. Vergleichbarkeit ja, Vereinheitlichung nein und immer gutes Erfahrungsaustausch. In diesem Sinne wird der Bundesrat den weiteren Prozess zum europäischen Bildungsraum 2025 aufmerksam und kritisch begleiten. Danke sehr. We thank you. It is a bit more complicated, but now I give the floor uh, to our colleague Hans Andreas Limi from Norway. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have to combine a little bit from uh, last session about uh, Brexit uh, and then the education within the single market. Norway is a very close partner with the EU. More than 60% of our imports come from and 80% of our exports go to the EU. The EEA agreement is the cornerstone for close collaboration on a number of other important areas, from research and education to health, civil protection and culture. Brexit will have a clear impact, not only on the EU, but on Norway as well. When the UK leaves the EU, it will also leave the EEA. Yet, I can assure you that Brexit will not change Norwegian's relationship with the EU. We are fully committed to the EE agreement. I cannot overstress the significance of the internal market. Education and research are also essential in this context. Norway is taking part in the current Horizon 2020 and Erasmus programs. Both are vital for a greener, smarter and more innovative society in Norway and Europe. The Norwegian government has already signaled its intentions to continue taking part in the next research program. Thank you very much for your attention. We thank you. And now from Slovenia, Mr. Nick Prebil. V zadnjih letih je stopnja digitalnega razvoja resnično bliskovita in glede na razpravo vidim, da kolegi razmišljajo podobno. Temu razvoju digitalizacije mora seveda slediti tudi izobraževalni sistem. Seveda ne v celoti, v nekem delu pa zagotovo in sicer v povezavi z znanostjo in tehnologijo. 
in verjamem, da moramo temu tako na nacionalni kot evropski ravni nameniti več pozornosti. Tudi izobraževanju o varnostni naspleto oziroma varnosti o digitalizaciji. Druga stvar, katero izpostavljam, je razmislek o skupnih možnih določenih enotnih izobraževalnih sistemih v Evropske uniji. Sam menim, da je in mora prihodnost in sprememba izobraževalnih sistemov temeliti na odločitvah nacionalnih parlamentov, ampak z velikim suportom Evropske unije in tukaj pridejo poštev tudi določeni poenoteni sistemi izobraževanja in predvsem skrb za to, da mlade izobražujemo tudi o institucijah države in Evropske unije, da ljudem skozi izobraževanje približamo sistem, ki je tako pomemben za razvoj in demokratizacije Evrope. In slovenski sistem izobraževalni velja kot enen boljših v Evropi, a tudi tega bomo na določenih področjih potrebno posodobiti in reformirati in seveda določeno tudi v sodelovanju z Evropsko unijo, kjer bo pa Slovenija ostrajala pri svojih stališčih. In kot zadnje, kot predstavnik najmlajše generacije in verjetno tudi najmlajši predstavnik v tej dvorani, Moram pa udariti, da so mladi najverjetne tista prihodnost, o katerih rada govori Evropska unija, zato je ključno medgeneracijsko sodelovanje in dobro izobraževanje mladih za stabilnost Evrope kot celote. Hvala lepa. 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 Pia Kauma from Finland. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Finnish presidency will start next week. For the young generation, education is the most important key to tackle the future problems. Developing opportunities to live, work and study in different countries is important. We have done that already and Erasmus has been one good example of that. But the problem is that university degrees and diplomas received in one EU country are not always recognized in other EU countries. We need to fix that. All young people have to have access to high quality education, not only at the basic level, but also at the university level. The right to education cannot depend on the social or economic background on the person. And in fact, it cannot depend even on the age of the person. For us more seniors, the word continuous learning is what we need to get used to in the future. Mesdames et Messieurs, aussi la connaissance des langues est essentielle pour comprendre d'autres cultures. Pour cela, savoir parler au moins une ou deux langues étrangères et en plus de la langue maternelle pourrait être un bon objectif pour l'avenir pour tout le monde. Néanmoins, il faut se rappeler que l'Union européenne ne possède pas de pouvoir législatif dans le cadre de la politique sociale ou éducative. Ce n'est que sur le niveau national que nous pouvons comprendre les besoins spécifiques de nos propres systèmes d'éducation. Pour finir, mesdames et messieurs, soyez les bienvenus en Finlande à partir du 1er juillet. Nous resterons à votre disposition, quel que soit votre intérêt et en particulier en ce qui concerne l'avenir du développement de la formation. Merci. Thank you, thank you very much for incoming presidency. And now I give the floor to Mr. Didier Berbera from Switzerland. Bien, merci beaucoup, Madame la Présidente. Je souhaitais euh, brièvement aborder deux points. Tout d'abord, le premier point, c'est la question de la formation professionnelle, notamment de l'apprentissage dual, dual, qui est d'ailleurs un, un système qu'on connaît et qu'on partage avec l'Allemagne et, et l'Autriche. Ce système, je vous le rappelle, combine en quelque sorte formation en école et en entreprise et c'est pour nous un facteur essentiel dans le cadre de l'employabilité des jeunes dans notre pays mais aussi dans d'autres pays. Ce système n'est bien entendu pas implémentable tel quel parce qu'il signifie qu'il faut des conditions cadres qui existent, notamment un partenariat social, un secteur formel fort et aussi une volonté politique de se partager la responsabilité de la formation entre l'État et les entreprises, mais je crois que c'est vraiment gagnant-gagnant si on arrive à trouver des solutions dans ce domaine-là. C'est une expérience qui est très concluante dans nos pays, en Allemagne, en Autriche et en Suisse, et ce système a été exporté dans quelques pays en développement, et on voit qu'avec les essais pilotes qui ont lieu, c'est un succès pour l'employabilité des jeunes, et je crois que c'est extrêmement important. Vous le savez, la Suisse va prochainement libérer un deuxième programme de 1,3 milliard de francs suisses pour la réduction des disparités économiques et sociales au sein de l'Union européenne. C'est la contribution à l'élargissement. 
et il est tout à fait envisageable qu'un certain nombre de pays qui sont bénéficiaires de cette aide puissent collaborer avec la Suisse dans ce domaine. Je vous rappelle d'ailleurs qu'il y aura une conférence importante à Winterthur dans le canton de Zurich et la Roumanie est la bienvenue parce que la Roumanie fait partie des pays dans lesquels on peut travailler dans ce domaine-là. Donc merci beaucoup et j'espère que cette contribution vous permettra aussi de partir du principe, j'en ai terminé, qu'il n'y a pas que les études universitaires, elles sont extrêmement importantes, mais aussi la formation professionnelle qui est importante en Europe. Merci. Merci, merci bien. Uh, and now, uh, a Swedish position, our colleague, Mr. Marcus Selin. Tack, ordförande. Tack till alla rumänska värdar för fint arbete och tack till alla kollegor här på vårt viktiga COSAC-möte. Oavsett om vi talar om utbildningssystemet under dagens pass 3 eller imorgon innovation, vetenskap och ingenjörsyrken så måste jag tyvärr uttrycka åsikten att bakgrundsmaterialet är tunt när det gäller att främja och få fler unga tjejer och kvinnor till karriärer inom ingenjörsyrken, digitalisering, forskning och artificiell intelligens. Och här hänger pass 3 och pass 4 ihop. Därför riskerar även främjandet av jämställdheten att brista. Sverige har som många länder i Europa gått från ett industrisamhälle till tjänstesamhälle och kunskapssamhälle. Och förändringstakten har aldrig varit så hög som nu med globalisering, urbanisering och digitalisering. Vi har ett tydligt underskott på kvinnor som gör karriär inom ingenjörsyrken och vetenskap. Därför även stor risk för missade möjligheter inom digitalisering, artificiell intelligens och sämre konkurrenskraft. En jämställd arbetsplats är roligare, mer lönsamt och här har vi potentialen till en större tillväxt. Vi har inte råd med skev könsfördelning inom vetenskap och ingenjörsyrken som nu. Det kostar oss jobb. Jobb är tillväxt. Med tillväxt kan vi investera än mer i vår välfärd. Ett sammanhållet Europa i det stora börjar med ett jämställt och sammanhållet Europa i det lilla. Låt oss arbeta för och inspirera fler tjejer att våga och vilja söka sig till naturvetenskap och teknik. Låt oss förenkla för alla inom teknik, naturvetenskap och forskning att kunna kombinera karriär och småbarnsliv. Både män och kvinnor ansvarar för familjen, hemmet och barnen. Låt det här bli en europeisk identitet där vi inte skiljer på karriärer och arbetsplatser efter manligt och kvinnligt. Låt oss verka för rättvisa möjligheter till kvalificerade karriärer för alla ungdomar i framtiden. Tack för ordet. Uh, thank you very much. I am a big supporter. Uh, but <laughs> uh, and now our neighbor, Hungarian representative, Richard Horczyk. Thank you, the floor, Madam Chairperson. As we learned a lot, that the essence of the European integration is the three movement of goods, services, capital, and most importantly, the people. By creating the European educational area, we, would, we could further strengthen these four fundamental freedoms. However, all new proposals should fully respect the member states' competences as laid down in the treaties. Hungary supports further strengthening the cooperation at the European Union level in the field of education, and we agree with the expansion of educational mobility programs in general. We support boosting the mobility of students, teachers, and researchers as it contributes to the understanding of each other. We highly appreciate that Tibor Navracic, Commissioner for Education, Culture, Youth, and Sport, regularly informs the Committee on the European Affairs of the Hungarian National Assembly about his activities. Commissioner Navracic has done, I think it's a remarkable, job also in the strengthening the already successful Erasmus program, including proposing doubling of the available funds for the program post-2020. The issue of strengthening European identity as an educational policy task is often discussed at the European Union forums as one of the tools creating the European education area. Hungary agrees with this objective and we believe 
that strengthening the European identity can be achieved throughout the strengthening of local, regional, and national identities. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now for uh, uh, respecting, observing the principle of gender equality, I give the floor to our Swedish colleague, Alexandra Anstrell. To be, to have... Thank you. Tack, fru Talman. Och tack för många bra inlägg här idag. För både tillväxt och eh, framtidstro är framstående forskning inom EU mycket betydelsefullt. Europa ligger långt fram, men vi ligger efter många och vi kan mycket bättre. Därför är forskning och innovation en högt prioriterad fråga. Innovation och entreprenörskap är viktigt. För jobb skapas ju av företag som växer och utvecklas, inte av oss politiker. Ändå möter många företagare i Europa, särskilt småföretagare, en enorm byråkrati och regelkrångel. Det behöver vi ändra på. Hur ska vi annars sporra och locka ungdomar till att starta egna företag? De flesta jobben och mest tillväxt finns idag inom tjänstesektorn. Här behöver den inre marknaden förbättras. Det behöver också utvecklas för att vi bättre ska kunna ta tillvara på digitaliseringens möjligheter. Här behöver ju alla medlemsländer ta ansvar för den egna arbetsmarknaden. Och alla medlemsländer måste ta ansvar för utbildning och bred digitalisering redan i skolan. Men digitaliseringen i sig är ju inte lösningen utan ett verktyg, precis som språket är. Och vi kan bli bättre på att lyfta och lära oss av varandra av goda exempel. För bra utbildning, insatser på vår arbetsmarknad, minskat regelkrångel och framstående forskning det är viktiga verktyg för att vi ska kunna få bra utbildad arbetskraft, fler jobb och fler i arbete. Där medlemsstaterna har ansvar men lär av varandra. Tack. Uh, I thank you. We have still 12 speakers, uh, 16 minutes and uh, many amendments to discuss after. <laughs> so now I give the floor uh, to Ms. Rina Sikut from Estonia. Thank you, dear colleagues. As in his opening words, Mr. Ion Dumitrasha described, we live in a complex world where changes we go through and the challenges we face are intertwined and thus require a similarly complex response. My colleagues have already described the need for uh, teaching digital skills, cooperation on, in, on EU level, but what else is needed? Uh, Estonia is a digital state and we strongly support moving towards digitally certified qualifications. This would enable automatic mutual recognition of qualification and diplomas and this in turn encourages educational, scientific and professional mobility. Secondly, informal education and acquiring skills through web-based courses, YouTube tutorials, hobby activities or voluntary work uh, is gaining more importance. So we need European approach in defining and acknowledging all these different skills but diverse paths to skill acquisition should be accepted in formal education as well. Estonia believes that on national level, in addition to ensuring high quality and affordable education, the state should put more emphasis on cooperation between different levels and forms of education to allow for flexible education paths. This would help to reduce early leaving from education system. When it comes to national parliaments, uh, uh, all, we all should advocate for better anticipation of future skill needs. For example, Estonian parliament is supported by the Foresight Centre that analyzes long-term developments and outlines alternative scenarios, also identifies decision points for policymakers and politicians. Um, and look I'm looking forward to the Finnish presidency 
uh, that focuses on the financing of Erasmus Plus that Estonia sees as a crucial mobility boosting measure. And let's move forward with the European education area. And I truly hope that the UK will be a part of it. Thank you. Now I have to give the floor to a representative of the leader, global leader in gender equality, Ms. Aslaug Arna Sigur Bern de Tir from Iceland. <laughs> Bottom. You don't have the floor. Have you, have you succeeded? Hello here, okay, this is okay. Thank you so much and thank you for the pronunciation of my name, it was quite good. First, I would like to thank the Romanian presidency for the kind invitation to attend this COSAC meeting. I'm especially pleased to see that education is on the agenda. Education is the cornerstone of our communities and the passport to our future. And we will continue to be faced with many challenges, such as digital revolution that we must tackle together. Education won the race with technology throughout history, but there is no automaticity it will do so in the future. And it's our responsibility as parliamentarians to put more emphasis on competence and diversity. We do not want an education system where all students fit the same mold that only leads to stagnation, and then we have no opportunity to prepare students for jobs we don't know of yet. Competition is a key component of the education system, and not only within the boundaries of our own countries, but through the free movement that allows our, for our students to seek education and experience abroad, as well as learning from best practices. We must also support the teaching professions and build environment and create incentives, both in terms of weights and professional responsibility, that encourage our teacher to grow and keep up with the ever-changing world of innovation and technology. I hope that our discussion today will result in a continued and closer dialogue of our education system in future meetings. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now, our Slovenian uh, colleague, Andrei Reich. Thank you, uh, Chairman, uh, Madam Chairman. Um, Že leta 2003 sem imel kot študent možnost sodelovati na programu študentske izmenjave Sokrates Erasmus, zato zelo pozdravljam namen romunskega predsedstva, ki je izjavilo, da želi sredstva za program študentske izmenjave Sokrates Erasmus povečati. Lahko pa govorim iz slovenske izkušnje, da je integraciji evropskega izobraževalnega sistema sledilo tudi naše gospodarstvo, ki dve tretjini svojega izvoza izvozi v članice države Evropske unije. To dela naše gospodarstvo močnejše in bolj odporno na gospodarska nihanja, ki jih lahko pričakujemo. Bodoče izzive gospodarskega in visokošolskega prostora pa bo vezano na dekarbonizacijo prometa, torej na razogličenje in tudi s tem povezano digitalizacijo in informatizacijo energetskega sektorja. V Evropi imamo zelo velik potencijal, to je 400 do 500 milijard evrov, ki jih porabimo za nafto. To predstavlja v primeru krize tudi potencijal za razvoj novih storitev in za zagon gospodarstva. Zato moremo kot Evropa na tem še posebej delati in posebej usmerjati tudi razvoj našega visokošolskega sistema in gospodarstva. Hvala lepa. Thank you. Uh, and now I kindly ask to take the floor, Mr. Gerard Crowell. 
Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I have to say, whenever we have a discussion on education, I get quite excited, but the two keynote speakers today really stimulated me. What a wonderful presentation by both of you. I started my career with Morse code and finished up teaching computer networks and operating systems, and I'm not a dinosaur yet. Ongoing lifelong learning is vital, but can I ask very quickly that we build programs for apprentices, that apprentices can avail of similar programs to third level education, that we develop programs where teachers teaching languages in particular can study in the country of the language they hope to teach in order that they develop the native uh, language. I fully support uh, collaboration between universities. Ireland's technological universities are open for business and looking for partners, as are our, our, our academic ones. I fully support microcredits. I think it's a brilliant idea. It's a way forward for particularly lifelong learning. And we need to develop a standard recognition of prior learning system so as we can develop those microcredits that you were talking about. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, now, uh, Lord Charles Kennel. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And thank you also to the two keynote speakers and their very interesting visions for the future. I very much hope that the chosen route forward at its core doesn't have uh, new structures, but will seek to build out Erasmus and also Horizon. Horizon, of course, having a strong educational dimension as well. I feel these programs can be further extended, further improved, and generally fostered. And that would be successful because they are trusted brands among the hundreds of millions of our fellow citizens, as we've already heard. I feel they tremendously well uh, promote the ties of culture and experience which uh, promote Europe. And I hope all here present feel that UK has been a good partner in those programs. Uh, certainly the UK schools and universities have felt strong benefit by being associated with them. Our committee in the House of Lords has firmly recommended that the UK seeks association with both programs going forward. And I very much hope that our new government will ask for association and participation in the programs and that we will be allowed to do so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and now uh, from uh, a candidate country, from Turkey, Mr. Ergun Tashci. Yeah? We could uh, go on with uh, our colleague from Italy, Ms. Elena Tester. Grazie, Presidente. È sicuramente uno dei temi importanti e su cui investire per la nostra Europa è sicuramente l'istruzione e i giovani. Questo perché proprio i giovani so devono essere consapevoli di quella che è l'importanza dell'Unione Europea. E già un primo passo è stato fatto attraverso il programma Erasmus che ha portato i nostri giovani a vivere senza confini e quindi l'investimento in questa direzione devono essere sempre maggiormente eh, prodotti. A crescere le competenze dei nostri ragazzi per essere competitivi, competitivi nei mercati globali. Ed è evidente che per creare un mercato unico è importante anche avere il riconoscimento dei diplomi dell'istruzione superiore e quindi eh, questo è uno dei passi fondamentali che l'Unione Europea e gli Stati membri devono eh, cercare di raggiungere eh, ma soprattutto bisogna fare un'analisi del fabbisogno delle competenze soprattutto per garantire un adeguato numero di specializzazione per le diverse professionalità accrescere la capacità di reagire alle novità del mercato e questo anche per evitare la fuga di cervelli, per l'importanza dell'innovazione e della ricerca. E migliorare l'utilizzo della tecnologia digitale per l'insegnamento e l'apprendimento è quindi fondamentale per far fronte al divario del, di connettività tra gli Stati membri. Sviluppare le competenze e le abilità digitali. Ne è un esempio l'interoperabilità, che in questo momento eh, è un esempio di quello che serve ad, eh, per raggiungere le nostre eh, competenze. 
competenze. Credo che sia fondamentale anche l'utilizzo delle lingue, i, i valori comuni che restano sempre radicati all'interno del, della nostra Europa. Grazie. Grazie. Uh, our uh, Turkish colleague uh, would like to take the floor, finally. So I give the floor to Mr. Ergun Tashci. Ladies and gentlemen, we consider European education area as an important initiative which will offer many opportunities and tools for the EU, EU in dealing with the challenges that arise from the technological development and new conditions in labor market. Completion of European education area will not only contribute to the better movement of the EU citizens, but will also equip them with stronger capabilities to meet the needs of new labor market condition. European education area will also contribute to the competitiveness of the EU by creating a more qualified labor force. We also appreciate the vision of European education area to the support culture and culture, cultural activist, activist in addition to the education. We believe culture and education are Edu uh, equally important tools for overcoming the challenge of the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now our Estonian colleague, I apologize for not being able to pronounce correctly, Tarmo, Tarmo Krusimai. Krusimai. Tänan selle kutse eest ja võimaluse eest saan rääkida ja ma sooviksin teie entusiasmi Erasmuse suhtes natukene jahutada enne kui te rahastus kahe või kolme kordseks tõstate, peaks leidma sinna hinna sildi. Ma ei olgem väita, kui täna me eraldame 500 eurot noorele, siis täpselt nii palju on mustal üüri turul üüri hind. Kui see oleks 700 eurot, oleks see hind 700 eurot ka mustal üüri turul. Ma keeldun uskumast, et me mõtlesime musta üüri turu jaoks välja Erasmus meetme. Kui must üüri turg on täna vähkasvaja, mis sööb noortele mõeldud raha, siis vähkasvaja tuleb ära lõigata, mitte aga teha talle vitamiinisüste. Aitäh! We thank you, and I give the floor to our, uh, my counterpart in the Polish Senate, Jaroslav Obremski. Próba spojrzenia troszkę z innej strony. Niedawno czytałem amerykański raport, z którego wynika, że trudne studia to domena dzieci emigrantów z Azji, dzieci z sytych Amerykanów, wybierają łatwiejsze lub pewniejsze ścieżki kariery, chociażby zawód prawnika. Stawia się tam pytanie, czy systemu społeczeństwu chce się chcieć. Czy to nie jest wyzwanie Europy i czy to nie jest największe nasze wyzwanie w zderzeniu z dynamiką Azji. W Polsce popełniliśmy pewien błąd myślenia o edukacji poprzez rynek. Okazuje się, że w dłuższej perspektywie istotniejsze jest pytanie, po co studiować, niż co studiować. Ważniejsze jest wcześniejszy zachwyt nad zdobywaniem wiedzy, poszukiwaniem prawdy, a dopiero później można to ukierunkować na potrzeby rynku. Odwrotnie to po prostu nie działa. Jestem zachwycony pomysłem zwiększenia mobilności i wymiany nauczycieli, nadanie pewnego sznytu globalnego, europejskiego dla polskich nauczycieli wydaje mi się czymś, co jest niezmiernie potrzebne. I następna rzecz. Swoboda studiowania jest wielką szansą dla młodych obywateli, ale może być katastrofą dla biedniejszych państw w ramach Unii Europejskiej. Jak zobaczymy, ile milionów Europejczyków z Nowej Europy wyemigrowało, z jakim drenażem mózgów mamy do czynienia, może być to problem w przyszłości. 
I ostatnia mała uwaga, powtarzam za Bundesratem, za Rainerem Robrom, jednak edukacja podpada przede wszystkim pod zasadę subsydiarności. Dziękuję. Thank you. And now I give the floor to our colleague, Jor Spimanov from Latvia. Yes, good. Uh, let good ideas fulfill. However, for being implemented, all of them should be grounded financially, European education among them. So may I intervene with the topic of financing of education. It is a challenge that is specifically defined for the states which are chronically short of money. Actually, these are them which are distinguished by small GDP per capita and high Gini index that reflects inequality of income distribution. The country I came from, Latvia, is a vivid example of them. So Romania is, as a matter of fact. I argue that the reason of this alarming outcome is the implementation of the austerity policy pursued in the Union so far. In the meantime, the attempts have been undertaken to transpose austerity and strict fiscal rules into the EU legislation. And the flavor of the rules is within the Treaty on Stability, Coordination and Governance in the Economic and Monetary Union, a so-called fiscal compact. It imposes stricter fiscal discipline on the member states of the euro area according to which national budgets must be in balance or in surplus, as you know. Should governments deviate from the said budgetary objectives, automatic sanctions would be triggered. And therefore, the stance of social democrats in the European Union, in the European Parliament, and those in my country has been that any introduction of the fiscal compact into the EU law must be preceded by a revision of the rules. More austerity and tighter fiscal regulation are a recipe for financial breakdown and human sufferings. As history has shown us in Europe and in the whole of the world, indeed, more austerity will no lead to economic growth, but will certainly fuel populism and afflict the poorest and most vulnerable people. In fact, it withdraws funds from the economy and from education financing, and therefore it lowers down a barrier in front of such an ambitious project as European education, which all of us are certainly in need. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now I give the floor to uh, Ms. Sabine Tilae. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Présidente. On ne peut que souligner la mise en place d'un espace européen d'éducation, surtout euh, aussi en respectant les compétences des États membres. Euh, deux, euh, deux sujets me tiennent particulièrement à cœur, c'est-à-dire le renforcement de l'Erasmus+, en trouvant des financements pour un public qui, normalement, n'est pas concerné ou qui se sent pas concerné par la mobilité. Je crois que ça, c'est vraiment quelque chose avec lequel on pourrait trouver plus d'acceptation pour l'Union européenne, si on arrivera à favoriser cette mobilité. Et aussi, évidemment, ça passe par l'amélioration de l'apprentissage des langues, mais on se concentre, à mon avis, trop sur l'apprentissage des langues. On devrait aller au-delà, aller vers un apprentissage de l'interculturalité. Je crois que ça pourrait grandement nous aider et dans les relations politiques et également dans les relations commerciales, parce que nous avons besoin de savoir que, où sont les priorités des uns et des autres, pourquoi tel et tel État membre réagit de telle et telle manière, ou tel ou tel euh, citoyen ou population réagit de cette manière. Et je pense que ça pourrait être véritablement un sujet pour les universités européennes euh, qu'on qu souhaite mettre en place. Merci. Merci bien. Uh, now, Mr. Elias Miriantus from Cyprus. Αγαπητοί συνάδελφοι, η ανάγκη επένδυσης στην παιδεία και στον πολιτισμό, δηλαδή τον άνθρωπο, εντείνεται μετά και τις πρόσφατες εκλογές του Ευρωπαϊκού Κοινοβουλίου. Η αύξηση συνολικά σε ευρωπαϊκό επίπεδο της συμμετοχής των Ευρωπαίων πολιτών στην εκλογική διαδικασία αναδεικνύει την πρόθεση του Ευρωπαίου πολίτη να ακουστεί. Αναγνωρίζουμε ότι η αρμοδιότητα στου εν λόγω τομεί έχουν προτίσει στα κράτη-μέλη, τα οποία είναι επιτακτικό να θέσουν τον πολίτη 
στο επίκεντρο των πολιτικών του. Χαιρετίζουμε το συμπληρωματικό ρόλο τη Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση στην επιδίωξη ενό χώρου ευρωπαϊκή εκπαίδευση μέχρι το 2025 και τις πρωτοβουλίες της για πλήρη αξιοποίηση των εν λόγω πολιτικών ως κινητήριων δυνάμεων για τη δημιουργία θέσεων εργασίας και για ενίσχυση της οικονομικής ανάπτυξης, της κοινωνικής δικαιοσύνης, της ποικιλομορφία και της κοινή ευρωπαϊκής ταυτότητας. Έχοντας επίγνωση των προκλήσεων που η τέταρτη βιομηχανική επανάσταση συνεπάγεται και της ανάγκης για ευελιξία και προσαρμογή σε νέα επιχειρηματικά μοντέλα στο χώρο εργασίας, υποστηρίζουμε τις πρωτοβουλίε για την ψηφιακή εκπαίδευση. Ενθαρρύνουμε κάθε κράτος μέλος να παρέχει διαρκή στήριξη μεταξύ άλλων στο πρόγραμμα Erasmus+, Plus, στις πρωτοβουλίε για την εκμάθηση γλωσσών, την αβημαία αναγνώριση των διπλωμάτων της Ευρωπαϊκής φοιτητική Κάρτας, την κατάρτιση της διαφύου μάθηση, την κινητικότητα των επαγγελματιών, την ψηφιακή μάθηση, την τεχνική νοημοσύνη, το θεματολόγιο για τον πολιτισμό προβαίνοντας σε δράσεις και συνεργασίες για πλήρη αξιοποίηση αυτών. Είναι σημαντικό στο πλαίσιο αυτό ως Εθνικά Κοινοβούλια να ενισχύσουμε το ρόλο μας καλώντας τις κυβερνήσεις να θέσουν θέματα αυτά για προτεραιότητες στο πρόγραμμα τους και να αναπτύξουν στρατηγικές μεταξύ τους αλλά και σε το Ευρωπαϊκό Κοινοβούλιο για εθάρρηση αυτών των πολιτικών. Ευχαριστώ. Uh, speaker before uh, the keynote speaker's reaction, uh, Marina Berlingeri from Italy. Sì, grazie. Osservando i fenomeni sociali, possiamo dire che ciò che decreterà chi avrà successo o meno nell'economia di domani dipenderà da quanto uno saprà scalare le nuove tecnologie e i nuovi modelli economici. Questo ci chiede un atteggiamento diverso rispetto alle nuove tecnologie. Non dobbiamo averne paura e, più in generale, dobbiamo considerarle come uno strumento al servizio dell'uomo e non viceversa. Dobbiamo investire nel futuro senza timore di esserne distrutti. Il massiccio investimento in ricerca e sviluppo dell'Asia si sta traducendo in un dominio delle aziende asiatiche sul mercato interno e in un loro notevole successo all'estero. La Cina negli ultimi anni ha incrementato la propria spesa in ricerca e sviluppo per portarla ad un livello commisurato al suo PIL e oggi contribuisce al 20% della spesa globale in ricerca e sviluppo e del numero complessivo di ricercatori e di pubblicazioni scientifiche. Tre delle dieci città leader nel campo dei brevetti, Tokyo, Osaka e Nagoya, si trovano in Giappone. Tutto questo fa vedere come sia di fondamentale importanza per noi mettere a punto una strategia europea per la formazione dei giovani in questi settori, partendo dalla proposta indicata dalla Commissione europea per il riparto delle risorse, previsto nel quadro finanziario più pluriennale. Va benissimo dunque potenziare progetti come Erasmus+, Plus, la mobilità dei giovani lavoratori, il riconoscimento reciproco dei titoli di studio, ma tutto questo va accompagnato con un forte investimento in ricerca e sviluppo che coinvolga in un lavoro sinergico le università, i centri di ricerca e le imprese europee. Grazie. Molto grazie. And now I kindly ask our keynote speakers to have short reactions to your interventions during this session, starting in the same order. Yeah, please. Well, first, I, I would like to thank all of you for, do, for this uh, very interesting uh, debate and overall quite uh, a large support for this uh, European education area. I would like to clarify that it doesn't put into question at all the subsidiarity and the competence of the member states in the content of teaching and the organization of, uh, of, uh, of teaching. Um, what we propose is fully in line with the Article 165 of the, of the treaty. And as several members uh, said during the debate, our role is really to foster the cooperation between the member states and the mutualization. And this is what is all about with the creation of the European education area. Now, several of you mentioned the need for investment. Investment is key, and you are fully right. And this is why we welcome very much the Jumbo Council that will be organized under the Finnish presidency on the 8th of November, Jumbo Council between education and financial ministers, because indeed, to be able to deliver 
on, on this uh, common agenda, we need more investment. And any support that you can provide is, of course, very much uh, welcome. Um, then to reply maybe to some of the points on the need for interculturality, yes, definitely. Uh, we are working on that through uh, providing an online linguistic support, not only to better learn languages, but also the difference in culture between the countries. And the European Universities Initiative can definitely uh, contribute to that as well. Regarding student housing that was mentioned by our Estonian, Estonian colleague, indeed, student housing is an issue, not only for international students, but also for domestic students. This is a point that we discussed together with the Director General for Higher Education recently here in Bucharest. And uh, we're going to provide more support through, as well, another European instrument, InvestEU, to provide additional financial support, loans, lending, for not only the, the education organizations, but for the cities, the regions, to really address this issue. Um, and then I fully support, of course, uh, more need in training of teachers and professors. Um, be able to attract more women and more young people in general to the STEM field. And this is why we are planning to launch um, a STEAM action to support a STEAM approach. So bringing together different disciplines together with the STEM and scientific fields to attract a wider range of students in, uh, in these uh, fields. So overall, I can uh, subscribe to, to everything that was said, and uh, I thank you very much for your strong support. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to appreciate all the intervention. All of you understood that it's very important to have in mind that uh, information technology and communication play a very important role in the next society. I believe the next generation of young people will be work only in this uh, framework, the digital economy, digital society. And I think it's necessary to work together, to cooperate, to learn the importance of the digitalization of the economy, and, and how to implement next industrial, next industrial revolution. I believe it's very important all the citizens of the Europe must prepare to implement this new concept, considering in this case artificial intelligence, cognitive robotics, machine learning, and many other technologies. I believe we are ready to implement this new concept in all our activities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation and the reactions of our keynote speakers. Thank you very much for all your contributions even if representing a country which lost 20% of its active population, mainly well prepared with high education during the last years, I have no hope for a better society in Europe. Uh, almost all our interventions thought that uh, we need an internal market and uh, people serving this internal market, not European citizens. I'm sorry for being so sad in, when uh, finishing this session. Uh, I give the floor to my colleague to uh, take the lead uh, for all our activities after this session. Thank you very much once again. Mulțumesc foarte mult. 
Asta încheie ziua noastră de astăzi, o zi extrem de interesantă, o zi utilă și o zi în care am schimbat idei, am vorbit despre lucruri care ne preocupă și, nu în ultimul rând, vreau să vă mulțumesc, să mulțumesc în numele dumneavoastră vorbitorilor principali, vreau să mulțumesc celor care și-au adus contribuția la dezbaterea de astăzi și... Vom continua discuțiile într-un mediu mai puțin formal la ora 19.30, dar pentru șefii delegațiilor și pentru noi cei care conducem această întâlnire, urmează momentul în care vom adopta lucruri legate de activitatea noastră a tuturor. Așa că rog să rămână în sală șefii delegațiilor. Pe restul colegilor sper din tot sufletul să-i văd de seară și mâine mai avem din nou o sesiune și concluziile întâlnirii noastre, care până acum mi-a plăcut foarte mult și pentru care vă sunt recunoscător.